The distribution system starts at substations, where 69 kV power is transformed to the 12 kV voltage level. This photograph of Stapley substation in Mesa shows the 69 kV source power coming into the substation from the transmission system and the transformers which convert the voltage to 12 kV. A transformer bay consists of one transformer along with conductors, circuit breakers, and control devices. The 12 kV circuits supply power to customers via underground feeders called getaways. You can see three bays at Stapley substation, numbered from 1 to 3, top to bottom. Bay 2 at Stapley is the middle bay. The diagram below the photo shows the connection of components in the substation. The 69 kV source power flows through a transformer protector, which we call a TP. The TP is a low-cost, compact circuit breaker which protects the transformer. The transformer converts 3-phase 69 kV power into 3-phase 12 kV power. The row of 12 kV circuit breakers is called switchgear. Circuit breakers function just like circuit breakers at your house, interrupting and isolating electrical problems. Each circuit breaker delivers 3-phase 12 kV power through cables, which run underground out into the neighborhoods in the area of the substation. Some of the 3-phase 12 kV power coming out of the substation is connected to industrial and commercial customers. For residential customers, the 3-phase 12 kV circuit is split up into three separate conductors. The individual conductors are energized at 7.2 kV to ground and branch out through neighborhoods. Small transformers near homes, which convert the 7.2 kV to 120 volts, are not shown here to simplify the drawing. Two transformer bays are shown at Stapley substation and at Reed substation. These locations are a few miles apart. Four single-phase 7.2 kV circuits will be used to illustrate how SRP restores power after a fault occurs. A fault is defined as any problem which causes electricity to flash phase to phase or phase to ground. All electrical circuits are insulated to guide the electrical energy to the desired load. When this insulation breaks down, we call the problem a fault and electricity flashes like lightning between two phases or from a phase to ground. When a fault occurs, a circuit breaker opens to isolate the fault from the electric system. The circuit breaker opens very quickly after a fault, often faster than one-tenth of a second. Some examples of events which could cause a fault are a car crashes into a power pole and the pole breaks which allows the energized lines to contact the ground. A tree branch breaks and contacts an energized line. The insulation on an underground power line fails after a rainstorm at a point where a sharp rock has made contact with the insulation over the years. The first scenario we will discuss is a fault which occurs on the circuit fed by Stapley, circuit breaker 122. A tree branch breaks in a storm and falls onto an overhead line. At first, when the fault occurs, a relay senses the fault and the circuit breaker in the 122 cabinet opens momentarily and then automatically recloses. The idea of reclosing is that some faults are temporary. For example, a tree branch, after contacting the power line, may fall to the ground, clearing the fault. Or the tree branch might be burned by the energy in the arc flash due to the fault and fall to the ground. If the fault condition is cleared, the circuit breaker will stay closed after it recloses. Most of the customers on the circuit will not even notice the brief interruption in their power as it is just a few seconds in duration. If the tree branch is still in contact with the line after the first reclose of the breaker, then the relay will open the circuit breaker a second time. The circuit breaker will then automatically reclose again. Some faults will have cleared prior to the second reclosing, and in this case the breaker will stay closed and customers will barely notice the momentary dimming of their lights. But if the fault condition remains after the second reclosure, then the relays will open the circuit breaker for the third time, and this time the breaker will stay open. Now 800 to 1200 of our customers have no power at their homes, and I am called out by DOC 
the Distribution Operations Center to locate the fault and isolate the fault from the power system. Initially, DOC provides me information about the outage and the fault. DOC provides me with the location of the houses affected by the outage. Outage information is provided by digital power meters at each house. Each digital power meter delivers a last gasp of information upon losing power, which automatically creates an outage map in DOC. The fault magnitude and the phases involved is provided by digital relays. The information is available in DOC and communicated to me. The approximate distance of the fault from the substation provided by the digital relay impedance data is also communicated to me by DOC. I drive to the neighborhood of darkened houses and into the area of the fault. It is much easier to find the fault if it is overhead. I might see a blackened transformer or equipment on fire. Or if the fire department or police have reported an accident to DOC, such as when a car hits a pole. Sometimes I work carefully with DOC to locate the fault, isolating and testing portions of the circuit until I find out exactly what caused the circuit breaker to trip. After I know where the fault is, I isolate the fault. Isolating a fault means disconnecting the area of the fault from the rest of the power system, opening up disconnect switches, or opening up circuits at 7.2 kV to 240 volt transformers creates air gaps which isolate the fault. Now, coordinating with DOC, I close in the normal open, restoring power to the customers between the normal open and the fault. Note that Reed Substation is now supplying power to some customers who had previously been supplied by Stapley. Finally, DOC closes circuit breaker 122 at the Stapley substation. This time, since I have isolated the fault from the power system, circuit breaker 122 remains closed. Now all 800 customers have power restored to normal, but the original fault condition still exists. The original fault condition must be repaired within a few months, since the looped system is vulnerable to a longer duration outage affecting more customers if another fault occurs after the normal open has been closed. What if the circuit breaker 122 had failed to open or was slow to open after the fault occurred? I will answer this question in the next part of my presentation.